Hello, programmers. Today I'm going to go over some of the day one MATLAB commands that I teach. And this is a, for a course that you don't have to have any programming to join. So if you've already had some programming, this isn't the video for you. But if this is your first programming language or second or your first day with MATLAB, this might be the video for you. So the students in my university have MATLAB. Um, already installed on all the campus computers and with their university login they can download MATLAB for free from MathWorks.com but if you don't already have it downloaded go to MathWorks and you can take a look at it it's not a free product unless your company or your university has a license for you but once you download it and open it, it looks something like this. And we start by typing in commands in this command window section, the section in the middle. And the first thing I do is treat MATLAB as kind of like a calculator to come up with some answers for me. I'll start out with some simple math problems, 25 plus 50. And MATLAB says the answer is, and it's abbreviated the word answer with ANS, the answer is 75. I can do another math problem, 5 minus 3. I'm showing that you can do addition, subtraction, we can do multiplication, we can do division. And every time I do it, it always overwrites what's in the variable answer. And a variable is just a name to go along with a value so you can access that later. So ANS is the default variable. Programmers are often lazy and they don't want to type a lot, so they might type in variable names like X and say X is equal to 3 plus 5. And it says, well, instead of the answer being, it says now X is equal to 8. And notice that the workspace, the section over to the right, now has not only a and s as a variable, but x. And we could do another math problem. So uh, I often ask my students, what do you think the answer to this equation is going to be? Do you think the addition is going to happen before the multiplication or the multiplication before the addition? And just what you learned in math class with the order of operations, we're going to do that multiplication first and then the addition. So now I've got three variables in my workspace. I've got my y and my x and my a and s variable. Now when you're coming up with variable names, you have some restrictions. Um, you can't have a space in your variable name. So if you're really doing a good job naming your variables, then you might have something like net profit, um, and I'm going to say 2020 or something like that. So that's a very descriptive variable name. It takes a little longer to type, but it tells me what is going to be inside of that variable. Um, one way to get around the not having the spaces is what I did here. Just mush those words together and capitalize anything beyond the first word. So the profit word is capitalized. And another way to get around the fact that you can't have spaces is to put an underscore. So my uh, favorite number is equal to, and I'm just making something up here, I don't actually have a favorite number, but now I have a variable my favorite number, and putting the underscores there is just as good as a space, very readable. Now what I've done so far is just typing in one command at a time. There's one more operator I want to show you, and that is this caret, and that is the exponentiation, so 2 to the power of 3, 2 cubed, or 4 squared, 4 times 4. and Instead of just typing in one command at a time, when you want to actually come up with a program and save it on your computer and access it the next day, you're probably going to want to put it inside of a script. The script, in the upper left corner, there's a button, New Script. So let's go ahead and click on that. And now I've still got my command window, but I also have this new window where I can type in line after line. So I'm going to type in, um, you know, money, there's $500. And let's say we're paying um, bill has wages of $100. And Sue has wages of $200 and we want to know how much money is left. So I'm going to say money left. So an easy math problem that you wouldn't need to write a program to solve it, but I just want to show you how to create a simple script, save it and run it. So the money left, instead of me typing in 500 minus 100 minus 200, one of the advantages of using variables naming these values is that now I can use 
the variable name. So money minus Bill's wages minus Sue's wages. And I have my font super huge, so it's kind of hard to see. Let me rearrange this so you can see the whole thing. Um, so now if I run this program, I'm going to see how much money is left. I'll go ahead and hit run. It asks me when I want to save this. I'm going to just call it maybe day one. Don't put any spaces inside of your file names here. Start it with a letter as well. And we're going to go ahead and run it. And we can see that the money left is going to be 200. It also ends up printing to the screen Sue's wages, Bill's wages, and the money variable. If you don't want to print to the screen something, uh, an intermediate value, put it semicolon at the end. That will suppress the output. And so now when we run this, we're only going to see the one value that we wanted to calculate the money left. Let's see what else you need to know on the first day of programming in MATLAB. So the advantage of using variable names here is that if I say, well, actually, Bill wants a raise and now he's got $150 worth of wages, you only have to change that value once. Had you hard coded the values down here in the calculation, you would have to now change it more than one place. So we run it again, it calculates the new money left, and I've got $150 left. I think that's good for day one, but there are many other videos on my uh, YouTube channel, so go ahead and hit subscribe, and if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Have a great day!